the year is 2012 a man dies and a city shuts down the man who died was bal thakre who never held an electoral office in his life but was a man who meant more than just some body to the city of bombay and when he died two young girls posted on facebook every day thousands of people die but still the world moves on just due to one politician dead a natural death everyone goes crazy the two girls were arrested and detained for 10 days hello and welcome to the longest constitution my name is priya mirza and this podcast is about the constitution of india and this season is about work about employees safety in a hazardous workplace employers liability and what restrictions can be placed on our right to expression in today's episode we will be wrapping up the bhopal gas tragedy as well as looking at the flow of information on the internet as well as the right to information about candidates running for office so let's get started by ending with the bhopal gas tragedy 26 years after the event 178 prosecution witnesses and 3000 documents later there was a verdict that the untold suffering of people and animals amounted to a guilty verdict eight people were found responsible for negligence that led to the death of countless bhopalis but the sentence was not for culpable homicide not amounting to murder but section 304a of the ipc which is a provision used most frequently for traffic accidents which has a maximum of 2 years in prison and or a fine and all those convicted had already been released on a bail for rupees 25000 each so we remember the major settlement between union carbide and the government of india in 1989 470 million dollars in october 1991 in a 114 page judgment the supreme court held that the civil settlement was just equitable and reasonable what but the tribunal to distribute the compensation began functioning only in 1992 a year later 8 years after the accident our supreme court not only absolved the guilty of their crime but also delayed justice by the slow and tardy system of providing relief support and compensation to the victims okay let's see what happened to those young girls arrested over a facebook post So in previous episodes we have looked at the government's effort to control print media and cinema in terms of shaping morality and public order and the reasonable restrictions placed on the freedom of expression under article 19 part 2 allow the state to do exactly that but what about the internet which didn't exist when the constitution was drafted so the internet as a space and medium to express is regulated by the information technology act 2000 and a lot about the neutrality of the net is what we will be doing in the coming episodes so pay attention now section 66a of the id act introduced by the upa government in 2008 gave the government power to arrest and imprison an individual for allegedly now hear this out offensive and menacing online posts and the problem with such words like offensive and menacing is that they could literally mean anything like those hideous good morning forwards one gets on whatsapp from the neighborhood group filled with sunflowers and suspiciously red roses what about those anyway this amendment was passed without discussion in parliament Now the problem with vague laws is that it empowers the police to make arrests over anything offensive menacing which causes annoyance and is inconvenient plus this was taken seriously a conviction for sending such messages could fetch a maximum of 3 years in jail Oops. so in the bal thakre case the arrests of shaheen thada and reenu shrinivasan in 2012 were not alone so the cartoonist asim trivedi who ridiculed bal A professor of Jadavpur University, Ambikesh Mahapatra, who circulated a cartoon that Mamta Banerjee, eleven students of Sri Krishna College, Thrissur, and their principal for an online magazine which used objectionable and unsavory language against Prime Minister Narendra Modi in the form of a clue to a crossword puzzle. That's crazy. And a businessman who tweeted against the son of a former cabinet minister. which is a few of the hundreds of people who merely said stuff and used the internet to convey that message and were arrested harassed and detained 
So to express annoying opinions about an MP is a ground for court arrest. How about knowing exactly what these MPs are all about? Now we remember from the episode on qualifications that qualifications for our legislators are pretty low, and yet they occupy enormously important positions of public office. How about knowing more about them? So the flow of information is not just about expressing, but about receiving information as well. What did we know about the people who make these delightful laws for us? Zilch, nada, nothing. Just because the constitution does not set educational qualifications as a ground to run for office, just because the constitution does not set educational qualifications as a ground to run for office, doesn't mean a voter would not like to know what educational qualifications such candidates do have. as well as their criminal history and personal financial details and other information necessary for judging a candidate's capacity and capability to vote i mean think about it we do it when we screen a candidate for a job why not for people who draft laws for us to legislate is a job so the association for democratic reforms filed a petition with the delhi high court and sought to make the electoral process in india more fair transparent and equitable and petition that candidates disclose personal background information to the public now when the election commission and the court directed the government to do so here's what the government said that voters did not have a right to such information that's what our government said thankfully this archaic and unconstitutional position was challenged in court Meanwhile, following the arrest of those two girls, Shreya Singhal, a 21-year-old lawyer, filed a case challenging the unconstitutionality, challenging the constitutionality of 66A of the IT Act. She argued that 66A was unconstitutionally vague and its intended protection against annoyance, inconvenience, danger, obstruction, insult. injury criminal intimidation were beyond the restrictions placed under article 19 part 2 of the constitution meanwhile in pucl versus union of india 2002 the court upheld the right to know as a right derived from the right to freedom of speech and expression the court stated that the public has a right to know about candidates contesting elections because such rights include the right to hold opinions and acquire information plus that the election commission can in fact issue directions to maintain the purity and transparency of the entire process of election in shreya singhal versus union of india 2015 the supreme court struck down 66a calling it open ended and unconstitutionally vague and thus expanded the contours of free speech on the internet the court also said a couple of important things the first that there's a difference between discussion advocacy and incitement one may advocate and discuss unpopular opinions but the law can curtail freedom only when such a thing amounts to incite plus none of these posts were actually disturbing public order so today's takeaways are the bhopal gas tragedy illustrated how the government let its people down by stripping the victims of any legal personality and denying them any meaningful role in the decisions that affected their case plus the government allowed the criminal and culpable union carbide to get away with murder the second 66a has been struck down but last year the supreme court noted that cases under 66a are still being filed lastly following the right information about candidates we have sparkling and sublime information about our parliamentarians such as nearly half of the newly elected lok sabha members have criminal charges against them of these 116 mps are of the bjp 29 from the congress 13 from the jdu 10 from the bmk and 9 from the tmc criminals across the political spectrum but i'm saving the best for the last Dean Kurya Coates from the Congress, who won the Idukki constituency in Kerala, has two hundred and four criminal cases against him, including culpable homicide, house trespass, robbery, and criminal intimidation. Charming, quite charming. Did you like this episode? If you have questions or comments, please send them in. On Twitter, I'm at fundamentallyp, and on Instagram, the longest constitution. 
Until next time, this is me, Priya Mirza, signing off.